Hello guys and welcome to episode 24 of my Stellaris playthrough playing as a Skista Circa Alviare and today the war continues. We are on 59% war score, we're slowly getting it high enough to get more planets but uh, the main announcement that comes in today's episode is that the patch 1.2 has been released and therefore there has been a huge amount of changes uh, to quite a few things. Uh, the first being uh, sectors. We now have core systems instead of core planets. So in a sector, for example, we can have two planets uh, instead of, uh, well, basically the system would count towards this number up here as opposed to the planets individually. So you can have two planets in the same uh, core system and it would only add one so that's good um, the other thing you may have noticed here is the uh, backgrounds of the solar systems are different so they've added a load of new ones I guess based on the planets that are in those systems which is really cool uh, there is a few changes to slavery and I say a few there's a lot um, I can't really go into them in detail as I'm not privy to them but Basically, it's going to make things a lot more difficult for me, I believe. And we'll see how that actually affects us as I continue into this game. Either way, we need to continue to occupy planets. Hopefully they've sorted out the war score. And the war goals will actually uh, start working. Because currently, it's not. And that's uh, really, really annoying. Because basically, I declared war for these three planets or oh, these three systems, so Kothium, Hadnok, and Dojak, and the uh, planets that are in those. But what appears to have happened is after I've taken them over, it's not applying towards the war score, which is annoying. So I'm basically having to work my way around that, and currently we are in a huge battle, I believe, uh, down here. At uh, Riador. Here we go. So we have our ships, our 17,700 ships up against the 5,300 of the Sovereign Kesson Worlds and 216 strength fleet of the Kix Lufran Galactic Hierarchy, which we already destroyed a lot of. Then there's some transports here that will get annihilated as well. And if we continue, my ships should start to fire again. Basically, They've changed a lot in this game, and you can see that already loads of messages are coming up. So, Migration Treaty Proposal. And Alliance Member left. So the Arassian Dominion left. Uh, the Great Adnoran Hierarchy. So, the other thing that I need to say is that all empires now have open borders with each other unless... You specify otherwise. It's a lot like Endless Legend at the start. You start in Cold War kind of thing. You can go into each other's lands willy-nilly and you don't have to care. Um, but as soon as you say that they can't, then things will change. Now, you'll notice my energy's dropped a ton. I believe that's because slave happiness is actually a thing now. Um, beforehand, you didn't really have to care about slavery too much. Uh... I don't really, in this case, I don't know why this planet isn't enslaved. Uh, let's just go ahead and enslave these population. That should make them more productive. But yeah, basically slave happiness is a thing, and that sucks. If I head to Mescal, let's have a look at these planets. trying to look for some population that are enslaved that aren't happy but I'm finding loads of non-enslaved population which is a bit silly so if I unpause it for a day yeah that is going to make them better you can see that that did add the uh, enslaved modifier there so these guys need to be enslaved purely for the fact that 
they will rebel otherwise. And they aren't happy, but I'm going to enslave them. And it seems like you have a base happiness for an enslaved population. Hmm, interesting. Don't tell me that's like unenslaved all of my population though, this update, because that would be really frustrating. Let's go to my main planets and have a look. Uh, everything's fine here. We can enslave that new population though. And that can actually be upgraded to an empire capital complex. Nice. At Voltaque, we can upgrade this to an engineering facility. And we need to make sure that we enslave the population in the right places. So this is going to take a little bit of micromanagement uh, from the start here. So sorry about this, guys, but with every big update, there is always going to be a lot of changes that I need to basically pay attention to. So yeah, I think now that like slaves that aren't happy, like this one only has 20% happiness, they get added to a different slave faction than the no the normal. And they have a chance to like rebel now, which is kind of frustrating. Let's clear that tile blocker. And everything's fine there. And in this world, everything is fine as well. So we'll just clear the, a few of these blockers. And that should do nicely. Situation log updated. Hostile fleet engaged. Situation log updated. So we started to invade Kareen at a fall and at Riador the battle continues. Now apparently the way Situation ships interact updated. has changed. But I'm not entirely sure. We've read that. These guys are fixed up at Difta. And actually, let's upgrade them while we're there. I'm not sure how long that's going to take, but it might be worth doing. And migration treaty proposal, that's fine. All of those guys have got those with each other now. And I think the reason that they've done that is they've also changed the fact that embassies are a thing. So embassies no longer exist. You now have a trust system in place. Uh, that's also something I remember from the changes. And over time, you basically improve your trust by having treaties with other nations. So having like a migration access treaty is one that would contribute towards that. Also, gifting other nations now is more effective, I believe. So in order to improve your diplomatic relations with certain people, you can just throw them a load of minerals or or um, energy and it should help out. So yeah, there's a, there's a couple more changes that you might want to be aware of. Lots to, to really take in though. So apologies if this episode's a little slow to get starting, but uh, definitely worth it. Let's see how fast these guys are upgrading. See if they slowed that down again. Situation log updated. Looks like they did. Because that is taking forever. Unless Situation log something updated. is being built here. Oh my god, look at all of these messages coming up. It's a migration treaty proposal, leave Federation. Kroll Sovereign Tribes left the Neberitan Kroll Alliance. Uh, the Interstellar Lalendra Empire left the Never written Kroll Alliance. And so did the Nathan Nation of Athas. Actually, no, that's a migration treaty. Okay, we're gonna have to take advantage of those. Seems that a lot of these diplomatic changes are going to present us a lot of opportunities. So this is going to take 1,800 days and that is <laughs> multiple years so that sucks okay so Hostile fleet engaged. we're still engaged here 
I think these are some of my ships. I'm moving on to the next group over here. Oh my god, so many messages all the time. Just gonna have to keep pausing it. A non aggression pact between the Democratic Onatok Confederacy and the Great Adnoran Hierarchy. Defensive pact between centralized Aramathi tribes and the interstellar Lelendra Empire. And a couple of migration treaties that we don't have to worry about. Okay, cool. So we've taken a lot of damage here. But my battleships, I believe, are still at full strength. Yeah, we've lost all of our smaller ships, but our bigger ships are still in full swing. Construction complete. Science ship under attack. Station under attack. Oh wow, what's going on here? At Altair. Our military station covering the planet is being attacked. What are these guys doing? Okay, so they've almost finished there. What about this attack swarm? So they are Kreen. They can probably head to Altair then. Meanwhile, I'm going to uplift all of those armies and we're going to land some more so that they fix themselves up. So that's 12 battleships. This fleet is basically just 11 battleships now. Seems we're chunking them pretty hard though. Very cool. So one of our sight ships was destroyed, annoyingly. And we have a peace offer, peace offer from the Kixlu Brand Galactic Hierarchy. Debris analyzed. Right, let's just pause things again because there's more treaties coming about. Migration treaty proposal, defensive pact between the Kroll sovereign tribes and the Great Adnoran hierarchy. Non-aggression pact between the Great Adnoran hierarchy and the Interstellar Lelendra Empire. Say, battle. And the special project is complete. Hostile fleet present. Just here. That should be destroyed soon. One of my battleships has been destroyed. But that cruiser did not last very long at all. And now their battleship won't either. So it looks like a science ship was destroyed. Which meant we lost a leader. I'm going to have to get a new one in order to replace him. So we'll get that guy. Assign him to that science craft and I'm actually going to take them to Riador because there is a lot of research projects here that we can take advantage of and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Construction complete. Situation log updated. Okay. So now I'm going to select Situation all of these new updated. fleets that we have and merge them complete. with these battleships, I think. Oh, look at those long range weapons. I'll have Situation to merge them after 
they finished with the spaceport here. Got a massive stream of torpedoes coming. That's really starting to do some damage. Look at that. Wow. Okay, so we are on 8,992 minerals. Uh, they have upgraded the sector AI. So they should be using their minerals more efficiently now. And upgrading the spaceports on their own. Uh, so hopefully we'll see a lot more of these minerals being used up. I'm going to pump some into that sector anyway because I don't have too much to spend it on at the moment. I could build more ships and I might actually do that if I just pause it, build some more destroyers because we really do need destroyers in order to screen our bigger ships against torpedoes because the destroyers currently have the sentinel point, uh, point defense systems. If I go into the auto best, yeah, they still have the Guardian Point Defense, which is really useful. Uh, then the battleships, I don't think they have them. No, they don't. They don't have Point Defense. They just have the small Devastator torpedoes, UV lasers, and the advanced railguns. Situation log updated. So a volley of torpedoes going towards that construction ship and then we can start to bombard that planet. Also this planet just here. Need to get my army over here. Let's embark all these lot. Oh that's not good. They need to retreat. Well they are dead. Very very dead. Let's just pause it. Where are these guys gone? Ah, oh, they're up there. Okay, they're in Altair. We need to get back to Ethol in order to destroy that ship. Or to destroy that fleet. Can they jump directly there? Is that what they're doing? Yes, they are. Okay, that's awesome. So they should be there to help soon enough. We got six days left. Four, three, two, one. Okay, never mind. We just saved them. We got our 16,000 strength. Situation into the fray and managed to save a lot of our transports although they are still being hit by the remnants of those missiles oh that is horrible so there goes a lot of my men <laughs> wow just like that but we'll now get the transport fleet, fleet engaged. to head towards Catrell as we start to bombard it. Situation log updated. Right, and while we're at it. Well, actually we just won the war. Thank God for that. Finally. We did it, boys. We did it. Best possible outcome. So we took control of those three planets. Uh, the one at Kothium, Binjul, we took. We took uh, Verbindak. And we took Jemadir. Now, these need to be added to a sector. So, what I'm thinking is I might add it to the center sector here. So, that was my second sector the Verl mapped sector although well, they already have 13 planets maybe the what's the Zavrak sector got oh they can just have them all okay we'll just do that uh, the Dojak and Hadnok system and also the Kothium system there okay awesome so we'll close that I need to get my science ship or at least one of them to come over here and start to work on those systems don't know why I can't Debris go there. Analyzed. They are out of reach. That can't be right. I mean, there's a wormhole station just there. 
Where's this science ship gone? Oh, he's miles away. That would be why. He can't travel because there's not a wormhole station close enough. That means that my fleets can't as well. Or can they? Can they come back? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they can't. Mm. Okay. Um... Uh, what I'll have to do is get a construction ship to come to one of these systems. <laughs> Can any of them? Can I build a wormhole station here? No, okay. Why can't I travel to that system though? Oh, I can. Okay, cool. And we'll build a wormhole station there. That should allow me to bring back a few of my ships at least. Maybe I can get a construction ship to this sector here as well. And we can build a wormhole station in that system. Nope, not that system. The other system. Well, it doesn't look like we can until we discover it. So let's just travel there. Debris analyzed. My science ship is basically stranded at the moment. We'll just merge all of these new ships together. All that debris has been analyzed, which is great. If I go to this science ship, we can add more to the queue. No, no idea why I'm building it over there. May as well just build it where the, my, my construction ship came in. And over here, in this system at Core Nagi, we're just going to build a wormhole station on the spot. So my construction ship stuck there as well. This one was stuck, but I think we can get him back. Yes, we can. And what I'm going to do is tell him to travel up to Diub and start to build the research stations and mining stations there. Yeah, we got two science ships in this system so we need to get a wormhole station that will allow us to travel there we also need to sort out our economy because currently it's doing really badly if I actually travel to a system when no one is happy, why are these guys not enslaved? Oh my lord, look at all these factions, that's just disgusting. Um, hmm, I'm really going to have to go through all my planets, aren't I? Because I do believe that the patch changed a lot. Hmm. So I did all my main planets, I believe. So Skisteron, Valtaka. Vald Yor, Vald Tavd, and Vald Patred, which I'm working on. Now I need to go through the Vald Lads sex sector, and I need to enslave all of these fellas. Um, <laughs> need to enslave all of these guys. Seems they're more happy when they're enslaved. Yeah. 
Wow, look at that planet. <laughs> they need to get all enslaved. Pretty sure I did this before, but it has unenslaved everyone. On this planet, looks like we might have to micro this a bit better. No, this one's fine. Actually, we can enslave that population. And then we're fine. On this planet, things seem to be okay. Well, this is going to take a little while, guys, so I apologize for this, but it needs to be done. Otherwise, my empire will crumble and fall apart. Which one did I just do? That one. Hard to keep track of which ones I have and haven't done as well, but... I mean, as long as I do all the ones that have my own population, or enemy population, sorry, like other species on, then we should be okay. Because my dudes don't really care about the slavery, but obviously other factions do, so... This... These guys are all enslaved. These guys all need enslaving. <laughs> Same with these fellas. I need to be a bit piggy here. So I just need to enslave some of these because we can. And they should be slightly more productive. Or not, because of the minus 33%. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the happiness outweighs the enslaved negative modifier. But we've already sorted out half of our energy problem. And we're not even halfway through our planets. I think it's just best to keep them happy anyway, so if we enslave them, that's what happens. And it basically guarantees that they will keep doing what they're supposed to. That planet's pretty good. Uh, these guys are fine. Same goes for that planet, just one I had to change there. Now one thing that I did notice is that in the patch notes they've made it so you can force the AI to abandon planets from wars now as opposed to taking them over and then purging. You can just literally make them leave the planet entirely which is really good and is something that I really wanted to do initially. Uh, I didn't necessarily want to enslave other species, I wanted to, to destroy them completely so that I would only have my species in the galaxy. And now we can do that technically by just purging all of the population on planets and then settling the planets nearby that are more beneficial to us and I'm not I'm going to continue like enslaving other species in this playthrough but for a future playthrough that's something to consider that looks like a really fun way of doing things just being completely genocidal and um, killing off a lot of other populations but in the meantime though we do just need to continue doing this which like I said is not the most fun to watch but needs to be done. It definitely needs to be done. 
because the slave factions are horrid. So hopefully we can sort out the, all of them. But uh, unfortunately, guys, that has been my time. So what I'm likely to do is just continue this in the next episode for a little bit. We'll sort out the rest of the planets, make sure all of the other factions are enslaved. And then we will see where we're left at with the factions uh, that have spawned and are have some discontent. So yeah, it's just a lot of empire management at the moment before we go to war again, hopefully. And considering a lot of the federations seem to have broken up, uh, we might be able to take advantage of that. But either way, that's all for now, guys. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.